Ah, Donald Trump. So Carpenter was already getting his name above the title before he even had one hit. This would be the equivalent of M. Night Shyamalan's Sixth Sense. Exactly 22 days before the Kennedy assassination. Coincidence? Jesus, could this house look more uninviting to trick-or-treaters? The Myers couldn't even bother to put the jack-o'-lantern on the steps so people could see it better from the street. This family can't do pumpkin placement correctly. We are alone, aren't we? Michael's around someplace. Michael's older sister decides, ah, I can have sex with my boyfriend with Michael around. It's not like he'll turn into a psycho killer if he sees this douchebag pounding me. I gotta go. Will you call me tomorrow? So from the time the lights went out in Judith's bedroom to now, it's been one minute and eight seconds. And a good 20 seconds of that is getting clothes off. I know this kid's in high school, but man, that is literally some weak sauce and not very long lasting. Also, after the terrible sex performance, Michael's gonna kill his sister? Michael starts stabbing his sister and then he turns to his right and what? Is he stabbing the air now? Michael? This is a great reveal and what a fun unbroken shot to start off a cheap horror movie. I'm removing three sins for this. Also, the Myers mask is iconic, but can we all just admit an adult in this clown costume would have been equally creepy? Well, Dave, we just found our son standing here with a bloody butcher knife in his hand, but let's just stand and stare. Don't you think we could refer to it as him? If you say so. The compassion's overwhelming, Doctor. Really, Marion? Just a minute ago you were complaining about their gibberish. I think the expression is, don't throw stones at crazy people's houses, or something along those lines. Man, it'd be weird if this simple shot of a matchbook inspired a white trash-themed reboot of this series almost 30 years later. Thank God that never happens. I don't care if he's from hell or not. This guy doesn't have the strength to open palm shatter a car window like that. He's gone. He's gone from here. The evil is gone. You see, Dr. Loomis, this is why nobody takes you seriously. You talk about Michael Myers in dramatic horror movie terms. You know the truth, so you've taken a leap nobody else is ready to accept. You need to learn how to relay how evil he is without calling him the evil. Also, how did you know that was Michael? All you saw was one of the many patients driving away in the car, but you never saw his face. Also, also, how the f*** does Michael know how to drive a car? He's been in this joint since he was six. Did they put him in the student driver program? Don't forget to drop the key off at the Myers place. I won't! They're coming by to look at the house at 10.30. This is a throwaway line, but brings up the question of what the f*** happens to the potential home buyers. In just two minutes, we will see Michael's already taken up residence. This is never mentioned again. And why wouldn't Mr. Strode be at the house to show it? Haddonfield, Illinois, where the California palms grow like wildflowers. I believe that's the city's motto. So, 15 years have gone by and nobody can sell the murder house? Why hasn't this place been condemned? Also, you'd think if you're Strode Realty, you'd get somebody to at least clean up the exterior a bit. And maybe do a little work inside, so you don't have to rely on Tom Hanks and Shelley Long to buy it. I told them how dangerous you he was. You couldn't have two roadblocks and an all-points bulletin wouldn't stop a five-year-old. But it should have. How does crazy-ass Michael Myers drive a stolen station wagon through two roadblocks without anyone seeing it? Does he somehow know secret Mario Kart paths to avoid cops? Because remember, this asshole's been in an institution for 15 years. And has the mind of a child. I don't care how the evil he is. He can't drive a car. He was doing very well last night. Maybe someone around here gave him lessons. Listen here, Dr. Loomis. I already seen that I know this sinning thing is a joke to you, but I take it goddamn seriously and so do certain Hollywood directors. Man, it'd be weird if Dr. Wynn, who's only in this one scene, would show up in, say, the sixth film in this franchise, and we'd find out he's a member of a weird cult that worships Michael Myers. Thank God that never happens. This is a great shot, and I'd remove a sin, except how did Michael know Lori would be sitting next to a window for him to stalk so perfectly? So why did he walk from Lori's school to this kid's school? Michael's business is killing babysitters, so is this some sort of complex dive into the human soul, where he sees a lot of himself in the kid and he feels the need to protect him? Now I'd like that, but that shit ain't the truth. The truth is, you're the weak and I'm the tyranny of evil men. Wait, sorry guys. Let's go on to the next scene. No one will be seated during the Michael goes back to the car, starts it, and drives alongside Tommy portion of the movie. Also, if this is supposed to be from Michael's perspective, then why are we looking out the back window of the car while he's driving? Michael, like most asshole drivers on the road, doesn't bother to signal when he turns right. Yeah, Haddonfield seems like the type of culturally relevant town in Illinois where a sign telling you it's 73 miles away would be appropriate. Payphone! He is coming to Haddonfield because I know him. From what Loomis told us earlier, Michael hasn't spoken a word in 15 years since the murder. So what information did he give Loomis that made him so certain he'd go back there if he escaped? Dr. Loomis conveniently pulling up to the side of the road where the dead motorist, an abandoned truck, and a phone are is convenient. Also, how is this not a crime scene by now? No one saw an abandoned truck on the side of the road with the door wide open and thought to check that out in the last few hours? Loomis knows Michael was here because of the matchbook the nurse used to light her cigarette, but doesn't bother to check for dead bodies. That might have been a good thing to discover and tell the police earlier. He could even tell him that there's a sign pointing the way to Haddonfield from this new murder site. Tickets on sale for what? Just the high school in general? And who would even see the sign? It's practically in a forest. Hey, jerk! Speed kills! 
Michael is literally going drive-by stalking speed, barely faster than you assholes are walking. Also, there is no way that Michael could have heard anything Annie was saying while in a moving car at that distance. I hate a guy with a car and no sense of humor. That is very specific. It's almost like you're saying you'd like the guy if he didn't own a car, but still had no sense of humor. I've got three choices. Watch the kids sleep, listen to Linda screw around, or talk to you. I'm starting to think Myers later kills Annie to put her out of her misery. Oh, look. Look where? Annie was clearly looking straight ahead when Michael was visible, so how did she not see him? <laughs> For a movie that is so good at elevating tension and suspense with the use of atmosphere and music, jump scares like this come off even more annoying. You know, it's Halloween. I guess everyone's entitled to one good scare, huh? And a creepy adult who doesn't understand the concept of personal space. Trick or treat! trick-or-treating at three in the goddamn afternoon. Even if it's like five or six, you are severely limiting your candy haul. If she's been gone all day, why the f is this window open? So at this point you call the cops, right? No? Okay, carry on. Rotary phone. Hello. This turns out to be Lori's friend Annie, who decided to call while her mouth was full of cereal and didn't even bother an attempt to say something. Judith Myers, Myers, row 18, plot 20. During his important search for Michael Myers, Dr. Loomis decides to check out the local cemetery to see if Michael defiled his sister's grave, which somehow takes precedence over checking his old neighborhood first. Why do they do it? Goddamn kids. Steal tombstones? That's a common occurrence in Haddonfield or anywhere. Mr. Riddle was watching you, Lori. Mr. Riddle is 87. You can still watch. It's probably all he can do. I like to think this film encouraged a giant spike in 87-year-old men joining gyms in 1978. Lori, stop <coughs> coughing! What's the matter with you? Since they're smoking weed and don't want to get caught, why exactly couldn't they just skip talking to the sheriff? He's clearly busy, and he could have just driven right past him and he probably wouldn't have even noticed. All they took was some Halloween masks, a rope, and a couple of knives. They stole a Halloween mask at the hardware store? Also, what's the f***ing deal with this town? Michael's been able to walk around in daylight all day, drive around in a stolen station wagon that is very easy to identify, he stole a tombstone from a cemetery, committed a hardware store robbery, and between stops he stalked Lori throughout the movie. And nobody's seen this f***ing guy, except Lori. Also, also, Michael had the mask on when he was stalking Lori at school, and afterwards when the girls were walking home. So has this alarm been going off all day? One thing this movie does in superb fashion, and it feels like nobody really ever tried this in horror movies afterwards, is using the edges of the frame to show Michael lurking around every corner. This movie constantly asks you to search the frame for it. Hey, where's Waldo for the 70s crowd? And it perfectly puts the viewer on edge. I guess we'll just chalk it up to the fact that Lori and Annie are high when they don't notice the same station wagon following them everywhere they go. Dog, it's still warm. He got hungry. Okay, this movie does not know how to time frame correctly, so Michael has presumably been following Lori around all day. Plus he had to rob the hardware store at some point, steal Judith's tombstone, etc. So let's assume he ate the dog, what, in the morning when Lori was dropping off the key? How in the f would it still be warm? He could have seen inside. Bullsh random thing that breaks a window at this very moment is random. And bullsh What do we do? He's been here once tonight. I think he'll come back. I'm gonna wait for him. Seriously, this podunk small town can't spare one cop to help Loomis out. By this point, there should be some sort of news about him. He broke out of Smith's Grove, he definitely murdered a guy, and he's clearly back in his old neighborhood. But sure, let's dedicate our entire police force elsewhere. It's Halloween, and somebody stole a mask out of a hardware store after all. Why do you keep him under there? Mom doesn't like me to have him. Great hiding place, dude. Your parents will never find that spot under the couch when they vacuum the living room. Lindsay, get this dog out of the kitchen right now. Lindsay. Tommy, there's nobody outside. All day, Lori's been seeing a scary dude staring at her at school from his trademark station wagon, from behind this hedge, and in the middle of this laundry. But as soon as Tommy says he sees somebody, Lori's lady boner over Ben Tramer overrides her concern. Annie spills a little bit of water on herself, and that's as good a reason as any to take off both shirts and her pants in the middle of the kitchen with open windows all around. Well, never mind. Guess you found a hot date. That was clearly a whimper and not a sound that would make anyone think a dog was okay. And he might be a bigger dick to dogs than Michael. And he kills them and eats them for f**k's sake. I get that John Carpenter loves him some of the thing, but did we have to watch all 30 seconds of the opening? I mean, that's a 30 seconds of logo sin in a movie within a movie. What about the jack o -lantern? After the movie. What about the rest of my comic books? After the jack-o'-lantern. Jesus, how f***ing long is this night? Also, they're making a jack-o'-lantern on Halloween night. What will they do with it afterwards? Put it out on November 1st? Think through your activities, Lori, come on. I saw the boogeyman. I saw him outside. Lori's disbelief aside, which is bullshit, by the way, this is what Tommy saw. He saw a dark figure standing out on a lawn that literally could be anyone. But because he's a kid that nobody believes, he's absolutely right about this. Oh, is this one of your cheap trips? Did Michael also have ninja training at the institution? Because he moves so stealthily he doesn't even make a sound. Lindsay, come out here! Lindsay, I'm in the laundry room, the door won't open! 
Lindsay. Now why don't we not stand here talking about them and get down to doing them? Man, Michael Myers hit the jackpot with horny babysitters when he decided to come back to Haddonfield on Halloween night. Which brings up the question, how did he know who all the babysitters were when he came back? How did he choose these victims? He's been planning this all day, and it's not like he knows the babysitting situation in this town. I spilled butter all over my clothes there in the wash. Am I seeing things, or did she simply spill water on her clothes? And it was just a little bit. Like, even if that was butter, it wasn't all over her clothes like she claims. Oh, no keys. Sure, you might have thought the door was open, but how were you going to operate the car without your keys? You went straight to the car without looking for your purse. How damp for Paul do you have to be to forget keys? Wait a minute, did Michael have a copy of the key? Or does he know how to use a murder knife to break into cars? And man, Annie didn't even notice. Paul must be the best. What the hell was Michael doing in this car for the last 30 seconds to fog up the windows like that? Actually, scratch that. I'm okay not knowing the answer. There's no blood coming from her throat, so what exactly did he just slice that? Her ear? Also, what's the best way to emote a horrible death? Probably not this. Tommy picks the most insane moment to play a trick on Lindsay, as it's perfect timing to see Michael carrying Annie's lifeless body into the house next door. Lonnie. Get your ass away from there. Loomis gets his Saved a Kid from Murder Boy Scout badge today. And if you are right, damn you for letting him go. What story did Loomis tell the sheriff about Michael's escape? How did that story turn into Loomis being the party responsible for? First I rip your clothes off, then you rip my clothes off, then we rip Lindsay's clothes off. I was told that ten years later this guy was fired from the Guardians of the Galaxy franchise. Lindsay is gone for the night. Hey, now that's wonderful. <laughs> yeah, but Lindsay's parents have to come home at some point, right? Jesus, this might be the least sexy sexy scene since Disclosure, but also some pretty good representation of high school sex. Also, based on where Linda's leg is and the direction Bob is thrusting, it would appear that Linda's thigh will be reaching orgasm in just a few seconds. Also, also, why is there a lit up pumpkin in this bedroom? Did they come up here and light up this jack-o'-lantern, or did somebody else do it and it's been sitting here for hours? Based on the actions of doors in this film, I think it's safe to say Scream 3 and Halloween take place in the same universe. Okay, Come on out. So Michael watched them have sex, then came down here and hid in the closet just in case Bob checked it. Do I have that right? Because I'm gonna hit up Michael Myers for gambling advice later if that's true. I admit this knife is huge, but how the f does it go through Bob's body and into the door behind him, having enough strength to keep him suspended in the air? After the investigation is over, the hardware store Michael stole this knife from should be using this in their advertising. I love this iconic look of Michael cocking his head side to side when he looks at dead Bob. He's either admiring his own work or wrapped up in the beauty of what he did. I'll take a sin off for it. A sin off for murder? I mean, look. Don't you ever tell me that this guy, while as evil as Dr. Loomis says he is, doesn't have a sense of humor. And since he also has a car, Annie would love this guy if she was still alive. This motherfucker never looked for the car before this. Also, how is it even here? We know that Michael parked the car in front of Tommy Doyle's house, even though we haven't seen it again until now. And the Myers house is not across the street from the Doyle residence. Where exactly did Michael have that tombstone stash this whole time? Also, also, remember when Michael took Annie's body into the house? He had to have been setting this up then, and he had no idea Linda and Bob would be showing up. But when he saw them later, did he go back upstairs, hide Annie's body, and wait to kill them before setting it all back up? I mean, where the f*** was this guy stored so that this could happen? What the f*** is he hanging from? And why did Michael just leave him stuck on the pantry door? Jesus, what is up with these doors opening on their own? Do the slasher killers only case houses with automatic doors? So, um... Time to get the f out of the house, right? This guy's a top-notch fortune teller slash knife expert on the cutting edge of blade technology, and he takes a poor stab at slicing the sharp heroin of the movie. Also, she just broke a leg, arm, both, or is dead, right? No? Okay. Carry on. Michael somehow knew to use a f***ing rake to prevent Lori from going out this door. It's like he knew it would come to this. He didn't do this with any of the other victims, but Lori's the one he figured would be the most likely to escape. Man, people are super talented in the Halloween verse at breaking windows with their bare hands. I'd send this for the obvious heroin falls while running cliche, except I'm still flabbergasted that she can move at all after falling down those stairs. What the actual f*** was this guy waiting for the whole time? When did Michael ever have the chance to cut the phone line? He's been at the other house this whole time, and he was just about to catch up to Lori about five seconds ago. So in the time that Lori walked in here, he cut the phone line and apparently broke this window to get into the house. I mean, this reveal is a lie. This f***er had no chance to do this. And even if he did, why did he wait for Lori to f*** around with the phone and sh before trying to kill her? Really feel like Lori not saying, so this, as she stabs him, was a missed opportunity. I'm surprised there isn't already a rake propped up against this upstairs bedroom door so that Lori can't turn the knob. Stab Stab him in the face! Although, you're right, it probably doesn't matter. No one shoots a horror movie like Carpenter. So let's review. Michael was stabbed by a coat hanger, stabbed with a knife, shot four times, and fell out of the top floor of a house, and he's still alive. This guy did come from two human parents, right? Well, maybe not, now that I reflect on it. Since Michael killed Judith at the age of six and escaped 15 years later, shouldn't this read Michael, age 21? Movie doesn't know how to math or credits.
I blame the chicken. You love movies. You know you do. Otherwise, you wouldn't be watching a channel that pretends to hate movies made by people who love movies. I don't know what that means. <laughs> Me neither. <laughs> <laughs> and a proper cinephile like yourself should get on over to movie.com slash cinemasins to make sure you're fully credentialed. Mama checked it. It's bona fide. Mubi is a movie streaming service with one goal, introduce you to great cinema. They offer a hand-picked selection of the best films from all over the world. Movies experts introduce a new film that they love every single day. And every movie stays on the platform for a full month. And this month is Horrific October, featuring iconic films from Michael Mann, Cronenberg, Romero, and many more. Don't think you can persuade me with appeals to my intellectual vanity. I don't think I'll persuade you at all. You'll either do it or you won't. And Mubi works great on your PC, tablet, mobile device, and even your TV. So you always have access to 30 great hidden gems from cinema history no matter where you are. No matter where you go, there you are. And right now, CinemaSins fans can get a full month of Mubi for free. I mean, do you know how many movies that is? Let me take a wild guess here. That's right, Jules, lots. I thought so. Just head to movie.com slash cinemasins to sign up and start exploring the handcrafted selection of some of the best films ever made, including their spotlight on horror this month. We love it, and we think you will too. I told everybody! Nobody listened. We didn't listen! We, we didn't listen! In 1930, the Republican-controlled House of Representatives, in an effort to alleviate the effects of the... Anyone? Anyone? The Great Depression. He got hungry. Man wouldn't do that. Tis no man. Tis a remorseless eating machine. I met this six-year-old child with this blank, pale, emotionless face and... Lifeless eyes. Black eyes, like a doll's eyes. Tommy! How's the peeping? Tommy, how's the peeping? You're serious about it, aren't you? I am serious, and don't call me Shirley. Gee up, I'm gonna come at you like a spider monkey. Costain wrote that fate was somehow related only to religion, whereas Samuel... You locked yourself in. Oh, and you're a regular Rhodes Scholar. Where, where was it you graduated from again? Hmm? The University of Duh. I shot him six times! <laughs>